In this video, we're gonna clean and oil this grandfather clock without having to disassemble the entire mechanism. The clock mechanism actually works fine on this. The problem is the chimes. If I pull down on the weight a little bit, it'll start to go, and then when I let go, it stops. The chimes were off and it sat for a while. The clock was running, but not the chimes, and some friction is built up in there, probably a speck of dirt or something. So first, I'm just gonna start with an air compressor and just blow on it, try to get some of the air blown out. With the rubber band, we have this lever held down. This is the lever that only actuates you know, like every quarter of an hour and then it triggers the chimes to go. We want this active all the time just so we can start it getting it going or we can push this and we don't have to wait for the clock to go like every 15 minutes. You have to be very, very picky with the oil you put on your clock. You don't wanna go with, get the oil can and just start dumping oil over it. Worst case scenario, you would use WD-40. That is really bad at the metal. It would kind of absorb into the metal. All the clock makers you talk to will tell you not to use WD-40. This is Liberty Oil Products, 100% th synthetic lubricant. It's built specifically for clocks and this is the stuff you wanna use. We got this bottle for about $9 on Amazon. You may be able to find other brands for this, maybe a little cheaper, but make sure it's specifically for clocks and it's 100% synthetic oil. You really do not need much of this oil at all. I'm just gonna get a little bit on the end of here and start oiling some of these spots. That's the end of an axle right there. So we get a little bit right there and I'll keep doing that to everything else. If you get too much oil, it can actually start collecting dust there, which is not what you want. You could also use a toothpick or a needle to do this. Just make sure you don't get too much on there. So if this moves at all, just oil it. We're just oiling every single part that moves. This side is a lot easier to get on the back side, but whenever we start going on the front, it'll be a little trickier. I got a little bit too much oil on this spot right there. You can see it's starting to drip down. I'm just gonna dab this on there and pick up a little bit of that oil. I just switched to a sewing needle right here because I'm trying to oil right in there and the pick is a little bit too thick to get there. I'm starting to notice a little bit of a difference as I release off, it starts to spin for a little longer it wants to keep going, so I'm just gonna keep that up and keep oiling the spots. It's starting to feel a little better. I can definitely feel it. It's starting to move longer once I let go. It just wants to keep going. So I'm just gonna keep oiling those spots. Getting the back side of these axles is pretty difficult. It's actually starting to go by itself. I just put one drop of oil on the edge of this flywheel thing and that actually, as soon as I put the oil on, I could see it starting to move and then it started going. That's all I had to do. And I'm gonna keep oiling these since some of these other spots still need it, but that really made it. Now that's really starting to free everything up. It's working in the oil by itself now. It's always cool to watch a machine come back to life. It's definitely tricky to do this with a tiny pin, but it's definitely the best way and it works very well. We'll start oiling the other chime. Got a little bit too much oil there. I'm gonna wipe that off. We're gonna take the rubber band off on this side because we think the two sides are connected so we can't get this one to actuate while this one's continuously running. Now with the rubber band off, both sides are actuating now and it's working just like how it should be. Now make sure that it's off of silent and onto chimes. And we'll take it up to the next 15 minutes and the chimes should engage. Here's the chimes. I'm just gonna blow them off a little bit because they're dusty. 
And we'll put the chimes back in. Now we'll screw the back on. Now we'll put the pendulum back in. Now we'll start the clock. Now we'll take this to the next 15 minutes and hear the chimes. These hammers need adjusted a little bit because they're not quite striking in the right spot, but other than that, they're working great. So everything is moving as it should. I'm gonna move it to the next hour so we can hear the other hammers hit. Those hammers are totally missing. It needs a little bit of adjustment, but everything is moving. We just need to fine tune it. This one right here is hitting really lightly. That's one we need to adjust a little bit. I'll just push the hammer forward a little bit lightly. Just kind of want to bend it forward a little bit and try to get that a little closer. Now there are these little screws up here that do fine adjustment on the hammer, but that wouldn't have enough travel to get it where we need to go. All right, I got that one hammer tuned up and now this sounds great. I'll take it to the next 15 minutes. Now if we take it to the next hour, the big chimes should hit in marking the hour. Now we'll wind up the clock here. Now we're gonna set it to the correct time, which is 12.27. Now it's set to the right time, and we can go ahead and start the pendulum. Now we've got it all cleaned and oiled, and it's nice to have the chimes back in order and everything cleaned up. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.